But again, this is important to understand. This is an important distinction to to make because if you don't understand it, then you just think like you're basically doing the same thing that most liberals do, which is like they're all Arab, they're all terrorists, they all don't have any like legitimate interests and they don't they're just operating on on the boundaries of like being evil. Okay? Like that's and and you can't solve any of the crises in the Middle East by just looking at it from that framework. That's just a very American framework to just be like, nope, they're bad guys. They're all doing bad shit. Is it like an ideological thing with liberals? Um, all right, so let's talk about liberal ideology. So basically, I made a whole video about this. Why do liberals like Israel? So they buy into the propaganda that Israel is some... I thought he didn't like you watching his vids. No, he has no sort issue of with me of most likely watching his vids. Um, especially this one. In the Middle East. Completely ignoring Israel doesn't have equal rights for gay people anyway. Um, but also, it has loads of religious fundamentalism in it too. And that's how Netanyahu got in power in the first place. So, um, they don't understand. The thing is, I made a video on this on Twitter the other day. Maybe we'll watch it together. People do not understand anything about Israel-Palestine. I'm convinced, and I'm, and I'm saying this as someone in good faith, most leftists do not know anything about it either. But here's the thing, right? Because leftists have good morals, they can see what's going on and learn about it. Liberals don't have good morals, so they think <laughs> they know better. True. And that's why they lecture people. Like, yes. I'm saying this, like, very nicely as someone who has, like, as privileged enough to have a very good education, especially in the Middle East. Um... I would say I know more about it than pretty much... I'd say pretty much every other YouTuber bar like a couple, right? Um, and I always say to people, it's not complicated. The solution is complicated. The, the, the solution which would have to have loads of compromise, that's super complicated. Knowing who's good and bad is not complicated. And it's clear Israel is a bad guy in this situation. And historically, like it's Israel as a, as a as a construct is actually comically evil. Who is helping South Africa, apartheid South Africa, make nuclear weapons? Oh, it's Israel. Who is bombing a nuclear power plant in Iraq in the eighties? It's Israel. Who's sterilizing Ethiopian Jews, which they you know saved from this famine, right, and this airlift? Then they sterilize them. Israel does that. Who locks up children without trial? Israel. It's actually like comically evil. We think the US is bad, and it isn't in its own ways. And I said the US is like one of the worst imperial powers, but I think Israel is actually one of the worst countries in the world as a nation state in terms of their actions. <laughs> <And> then- <laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's right. It's so unimaginably uh, cruel and racist. Like, it makes no sense. Like, it literally is just when you look into it a little bit, you're like, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean? What? How? It's cartoonish. Bro, I just showed you guys like actual sitting representatives that are like, oh yeah, the group of people that we just have been mercilessly and ruthlessly bombing where we killed 4,000 children over the course of the past week. Yeah, those guys are actually faking it. They're not really dying. They're faking it. Who does that? Like, I'm thinking of like the most insane American shit, right? And America is gross. Make no mistake. But even, at least America, like, delegates the fucking propaganda to the media outlets. Like, you you don't have this level of people just being like, yeah, everybody knows that people in Iraq were faking it. Like, we didn't even fucking do Operation uh, <laughs> we uh, Iraqi Freedom. That didn't even happen. <laughs> we didn't fucking, Fallujah, what? That's not real. Like, at least they shut the fuck up about it and let the media do the talking. You know what I mean? It's nuts. It's nuts that, holy shit, people are so Western-centric. I'm just saying it's, like, wild to me. I, I'm thinking about it. Like, obviously, America bad. You know what I mean? America bad. But, like, they don't, you know, they don't even go to this level of, like, personal animosity usually. Imagine how many backroom meetings the U.S. is having with Israeli officials saying she's like, please stop speaking and let us do the propaganda. No, literally, it's actually, it's, it's so insane. Like, like Israel's bloodlust has literally gotten in its own way to conduct whatever operation they want to. Okay, America's like, dude, come on. Uh, uh, 
uh, America's like, dude, dude, use smaller bombs. Stupid. What are you doing? Like, that's not how you're supposed to do ethnic cleansing. We are the kings of this. We love killing Arabs. We know how to kill Arabs really fucking well. Look at Iraq. Look at Afghanistan. Look at literally the entire region, okay, around you. We know how to do this. Just listen to our advice, please. Like, do humanitarian corridors so you can do the ethnic displacement. And it was like, no, dog, I'm going to keep bombing. I'm going to fuck you. For that, I blew up another school. I actually blew up another hospital. Fuck you. I'm going to blow up two extra hospitals. For, for that take, I'm killing a fucking uh, first responder. <laughs> there you go. You made me do it. And then you have 89% of the country supporting the apartheid status quo and most people supporting the war. And most people serve in the military. And most people don't vote for a party that is against the occupation, right? So you have a hyper-militarized society and a country that does, that does absolutely terrible shit historically and has gotten worse and worse and worse. And liberals are trying to tell you that it's complicated. It's really not complicated. It's not complicated at all, right? And and I was actually speaking to someone who who is German English. I think that's how you describe it. We were talking about the Palestine stuff in Germany because even German leftists support Israel because it's some sort of guilt for how Germany have treated the Jews historically culminating in the Holocaust, right? And they literally see it as some sort of land back thing. Like they genuinely think, and, it, and it's some absolutely insane guilt because these people, most of them now in Germany, they weren't even alive when World War II happened and they still support Israel because they think they're being fighting against anti-Semitism, which is is like absolutely crazy to me that they can't see that no they are not the same things um being anti-zionist is literally being against a colonial ideology being anti-semitic is like believing racist like stereotypes about jewish people controlling the world banks or something so yeah a lot of liberals have weaponized or or are so brainwashed by wokeness and here people get sometimes mad what i'm i'm woke right i i, I don't see it as a negative thing so don't don't get me wrong with that. I don't think woke is a, is a negative thing. But what I think the colloquial woke means is like liberal identity politics. I think originally that's what it meant. And now it just means like everything, right? But when, it, but if we understand it as something about liberal identity politics, that's how you can view liberal support for Israel is that they think Muslims backwards, Muslims are uncivilized, Israel civilized, and you know, they've gone through so much. And then they're the natives. Israelis are native to um, Palestine. Which is another fucking myth, which every liberal seems to believe. So, um, so let's get into this. Here's another one. I made a video last week and I posted it on my Twitter. People don't know fucking anything about Hamas. And liberals acting like they know something about it is infuriating to me. Like they legit know nothing about it. And that's why these liberal takes drive me absolutely insane. Because, okay, like I said, I don't think most people know about anything to do with Hamas. But at the same time, liberals have this like chauvinism, they have this racism, which makes them describe it in a certain way. This is the video I made, uh, but I'll just talk about it instead. So Claudia Brown, I don't know who this person is, some sort of like liberal destiny support or whatever. Um, all right, so Hamas doesn't give a shit about, doesn't give a fuck about Palestinian <laughs> people. They use their people as human shields. You claim to be for Palestine. I love, I love these takes so much. It's like, yeah. We are saving the Palestinians from Hamas by killing them is such. Oh, it's like I've heard it so many times. It's funny at this point, but it's like such a psychotic thing to say. Like what? Work through it, please. Please fucking work through it for like a second, dude. People, you should be against those that use them as human shields and escalate shit to the point peace becomes basically impossible. So you're blaming the Palestinians for what's happening, basically. And this notion that Hamas are some sort of like Islamic um, jihadi mafia that won't let Palestinians <laughs> be free is insane to me. Hamas is the government of Palestine, oh, not Palestine, is the government of Gaza. Like it or not, the same way, you know, Iran is ruled by the Ayatollah. If you don't like that, then that's fine. But that's just the reality. Hamas runs runs the territory. And they were elected to run the territory. So acting like Palestinians are victims of Hamas the same way they are victims of Israel is literally Israeli propaganda. And yes. you're basically implying with this take, if Israel could simply not kill civilians, but just kill Hamas fighters, 
the Palestinians would be grateful. They wouldn't be because it fundamentally doesn't understand the situation. And this is another take I keep seeing. And I think it's both motivated by Palestinians have to do this or they'll be labelled terrorists if they try and bring nuance to it. And liberals are just fucking idiots who don't understand that most people fighting right now, the Israelis, have grown up in Gaza under Hamas control. They don't see Hamas as evil Nazi ISIS. They just see them as the fucking government. And if you want to fight the Israelis, and it's like, and it, it, it's like, yeah, just like with any government, they're like, okay, well, I don't really like everything they're doing, right? Like, it, it's the same principle. It's ridiculous, but that's why the terrorist designation is so important. Because, like, it's not necessarily to be like, oh, they're violent and they target civilians, which they do, certainly, okay? But it's not like they have fucking guided munitions and, and the same capabilities that Israel has with, like, precise striking, you know what I mean? Um... Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that like uh, militarily speaking, if they had better weapons, like instead of fucking indiscriminately killing civilians, they probably want to fucking neuter the military, right? Like that's their goal on the militancy side of the Al Qassam brigades is to like kill as many fucking soldiers as possible because those are the guys who are killing them. Like, however, however, the 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 desperation is where the suicide strikes go directly into uh, attacking Israeli civilians. And this shift, this shift came after 1994 with the Baruch Goldstein uh, 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 terror attacks. You got so close to getting to that terrorist combo with Ethan, it was so interesting to see what his reaction was. Y'all never really got into it. Yeah, I didn't, I wanted to talk to him about that as well because like it, it also... It also neuters analysis on the situation entirely because, like, it, it's you just you have to sit there and be like, yeah, they're bad and and they're really bad and they're evil and they're evil because they're evil, and like you can't arrive at a solution to what both parties consider to be a problem, right? You can't arrive at a solution. You just can't because then it's like, okay, yeah, they're bad. So how do we deal with it? Yeah, we have to kill them uh, while I sit there and condemn them for, for being bad. That's why I try to, that's why I try to talk about, uh, you know, the, the militancy aspect of it or that it's simply an expression of, of violent emancipatory action against an apartheid regime because they're not like ISIS. That's, I guess, the best uh, way to describe it. They're not. They have an interest in civil governance, whether they like it or not, whether they're good at it or not, they still have to do that. Similar, not dissimilar to Hezbollah, actually, as a matter of fact. Like, the people that live under, uh, uh, the, the people that live in territories that Hezbollah controls might not like Hezbollah, but ultimately, they still have a, a overarching goal in civil governance and that's part of the reason why they're not fucking attacking uh, Israel right now. Because if Hezbollah was literally like, oh yeah, YOLO, we're just a terror cell. We just love doing terrorism. Okay. Then why the fuck wouldn't they attack Israel? Who gives a shit if Israel fires back and like blows up entire fucking uh, uh, entire towns and shit? But they can't do that. So when you have, when you have a, is the Taliban interested in civil governance? Absolutely. Yes. And the Taliban, as a matter of fact, is significantly more fundamentalist than Hamas is. Taliban's violence is born out of the conflict in a similar fashion too, but they are also significantly more fundamentalist, which is part of the reason why whenever Taliban or other militancies in the fucking region literally say things like, oh, we want to go to Israel and defend them or whatever. We want to go to Israel and, and you know, uh, defend the Palestinians or whatever. There's just like, there's no collaboration. But again, this is important to understand. This is an important distinction to, to make because if you don't understand it, then you just think like, you're basically doing the same thing that most liberals do, which is like, they're all Arab, they're all terrorists, they all don't have any, like legitimate interests and they don't they're just operating on on the boundaries of like being evil okay like that's and and you can't solve any of the crises in the middle east by just looking at it from that framework that's just a very american framework to just be like nope they're bad guys they're all doing bad shit huh <sighs> you join them 
it's as simple as that it's like it's like the ukrainians right if you want to if you don't if you're a you know there's, there's ukrainian anarchists fighting they don't like the ukrainian state but they join the ukrainian state to fight russia they join the ukrainian state's army to fight russia right so you understand that but you understand a great example a 17 year old 16 year old kid who's grown up in an open air prison no electricity hardly not like barely any access to clean water and food cannot fucking leave. Why would yeah? As, uh, Hamas also even advocates for the release of the PFLP leadership who's in jail due to them having to play politics. Yeah, literally no. Like in the eyes of the Palestinians, Hamas has taken advantage of like Israel's cruelty time and time again. Um, for example, the Palestinian Authority will regularly round up Palestinians and arrest them for Israel. Hamas, uh, in the eyes of the Palestinians, is advocating to release them. So they look at the situation and they're like, well, I don't really like those guys, but like they're fighting for me, it seems. And the guys that are supposed to be fighting for me, my own civil governance is not doing shit and is fighting against me. So in the eyes of Palestinians, and this is again, 1000% Israel's policy failure. If you want to talk about it from uh, the, the boundaries of governance and, and how what governments are supposed to do, Israel should have at, at every step of the fucking way, Israel could have and should have treated the Palestinian Authority as like a legitimate form of civil governance and made concessions with the PA, okay, rather than just fucking use them as a part of their security force to just destroy Palestinians with. What are they supposed to do? What are the people supposed to do? They're just like, just, they just sit there and take it all the time. But they join Hamas. And acting like Hamas hold these people hostage is just insane racism. Shows you don't understand anything about the conflict. Like, you literally don't know fucking anything. You're an idiot. You're just a fucking racist. You think Hamas are ISIS. And that's why Israel say it. Because they, they know fucking idiots like this who believe this shit. They know they think Hamas... That's actually a great take. I never even thought about that uh, from this perspective. It's a flattening of religious extremism. When we talk about Christians, we understand that they have fall on a super wide spectrum of craziness from sitting in a bathtub full of snakes to Bieber's pastor. Due to propaganda with Muslims, Americans see all Muslims as insanely fundamentalist when they aren't. But also, there's another, there's another thing there. We have to compare material conditions. Because in America... You have fundies that are just as fucking ruthless as even ISIS, right? But what the fuck do they do in America where they have at least like most of their basic needs met? They go to Applebee's and they fucking finger pop each other's assholes, okay? That's what they do. They fuck their cousins and they eat jalapeno poppers and then they do like LARPing tactical shit on the weekends. That's what happens when you fucking have all of your material needs met, whereas if they were dropped into a similar situation to fucking Baghdad, they would 100% be throwing gay people off roofs. Like, come on! Like, it's not born out of, like, some, some genuine morality. Like, they don't have this, like, uh, heightened sense of, of humanity. Like, our extremists are somehow better than their extremists. It's just that our extremists do not have the need, do not feel like they've been pushed to a fucking wall or live in a constant state of fucking chaos with no governance whatsoever. Think about it from the perspective of, of what these Y2K perverts fantasize about on a regular basis. Oh yeah, the world's going to end and I'm going to fucking go to my bomb shelter. I'm going to come out. I'm going to make my own, uh, you know, slave chambers, brother. Hell yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. There you go. That's what they would do if they were dropped into fucking Fallujah. Hamas or ISIS. And here's another thing as well. People saying Hamas are, her, are Iran proxies also don't fucking understand the politics of the Middle East because historically Hamas have not been backed by Iran. That's Hezbollah. They're not the same thing. Hezbollah was created by Iran. Hamas has traditionally been funded by Qatar and also by the Saudis and by covertly all like Sunni nations because they're a Sunni group. Hezbollah is a Shiite political group. Hamas is Sunni. They're literally completely. I mean, in its inception, they got more money than from Israel than they did from Iran. Yeah, of course. Different sects of Islam, and they were backed by rival powers. Iran backs Hezbollah. It's completely different. So that's another thing I don't understand. But to them, it's Muslims. Muslims, like they're. No, all... Hamas and Hezbollah have had brief, uh, brief beef, like very short, short-lived beef. Because right now, their major backers, right now, their major backers are Iran. And, and they have been for some time. All the same. Which, again, insane to me. Saddam Hussein backed Hamas. Saudis backed Hamas. Iran backed Hezbollah. Like, and, and the only thing is, 
Sometimes Hamas and Hezbollah join together to work on certain things. But historically, they haven't had great relations with each other because they don't like each other. One thing they do like is they like fighting the Israelis. And they do it for different reasons. But again, Hezbollah are not the same as Hamas. Hamas are not an Iran stooge. Yeah, now they might be getting some weapons from Iran, I imagine, and Syria. I don't think, I don't, I, I actually, this part I will disagree with. I, I don't know if, um, I, I, like, they got Muslim Brotherhood backing. It, they are originally Muslim Brotherhood, which they've actually, I believe, uh, cut ties with at this point. But I, don't, I wouldn't say that they've been, I wouldn't say that they've been getting uh, backing from Saudi Arabia. They've been getting backing for Iran for a much longer uh, time than, uh, than, than, like, they, they were getting, they were being funded by Sunni groups. He's right about that, right? I don't think it was Saudi Arabia. However, however, is this a viewer he's debating? No, he's just, uh, he just did a stream, I guess, and then he uploaded the stream, so I'm just watching it because he's just shitting on libs, telling him they don't know anything they're talking about. Um, I'm not sure about, I'm not sure about the, the uh, Saudi... Uh, the Saudi backing. Like, the only thing I can find here is, like, uh, Hamas pivoting to Saudi Arabia. But but the Qatar part is true. Yes, he is right. Um, you're wrong on this? I miss politics, Hassan. What do you mean? This is politics, Hassan. At most, they'll probably have, like, a... I mean, I don't know. They probably have, like, specific patrons or whatever inside of the kingdom, but... Iran has suspended military since the Palestinian organization in a July 24th interview. This decision greatly impacts the ongoing power struggle between the political and military wings of Hamas as Iran's military wing's chief patron. Hamas responded that Iran's decision with increased diplomatic overtures towards Saudi Arabia and by holding a summit between his leader Khaled Mashal and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Doha. Hamas's Saudi pivot revives a historic partnership. Saudi Arabia funded the majority of Hamas's operations between 2000 and 2004, according to Israeli estimates. The GCC contributed $12 million annually. See, I didn't know this. Okay. Compared to the 3 million coming from Iran and only began to scale back support for Hamas in 2004 due to U.S. pressure. Iran's strident anti-Israel rhetoric made it the ideal sponsor for Hamas after 2004. However, Iran-Hamas relationships have deteriorated considerably since 2011. This part is the brief... Uh, this part was the, the brief uh, back and forth that they had. Uh, due to Iran's support for the Assad regime in Syria, relations between the two only began to thaw in late 2014 as Hamas sought a powerful regional ally to counter hostility from Egypt when President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi came to power. Hamas' pivot towards Saudi Arabia abruptly ended this thaw by shutting Iran in favor of Saudi Arabia, which is more moderate in its rhetoric towards Israel. Hamas' political wing may be attempting to rebrand its international image. Hamas growing foreign policy, policy ties to Saudi Arabia and non mena regional actors such as Russia over its traditional allies, Iran, Syria, and Qatar, can be explained by two factors. They may be trying to increase financial resources by creating contests uh, uh, between Saudi Arabia and Iran as both countries will compete to see as the greater power, uh, the greater champion of the Palestinian cause. Learn something new every day. Just to fight the Israelis because of geopolitics. But historically, Hamas have not been in bed with Iran. That's, like I said, Hezbollah was literally created by Iran. That's what was in bed with Iran. But again, people don't understand this shit. People literally know nothing. And that, that's why sometimes I wish I didn't know stuff. Because when you know all this stuff, and you see everyone just having, like, terrible shit takes because they don't understand about the politics of the middle east like literally i don't know anyone i could have a conversation with who probably even knows hamas are different to isis like why are hamas different yeah. to hezbollah why are hamas different to al-qaeda people this person in particular is just a symptom of loads of people not knowing that and of course hamas i think hamas can be compared to hezbollah way more than it can be compared to isis um one, because of ties to uh, uh, the, I mean, it's a part of Iran's like axis in the region, uh, axis forces in the region, but also partially because they have a branch of civil governance, like they have duties of civil governance, which is like kind of removed from Al Qassam as well. Not even kind of. Whereas ISIS has no fucking interest in any of that and is like 
you know, born out of uh, America's power vacuum and also America's uh, propping up of ISIS in general. This comes from the Muslim ISIS's brother. goals are also to just like ruthlessly slaughter motherfuckers and like uh, have uh, have this like insane Islamic caliphate style uh, hyper fundamentalist Sharia law. It's just it's so different. Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood is Egyptian. Muslim Brotherhood historically has wanted Sharia law, but has worked with poor groups in Egypt, been banned by Egypt, did get power after the Egyptian revolution, then the government overthrew them. So it's very complicated. I love Middle Eastern history. I love Middle Eastern politics. I did a fucking master's degree that focused on this. So I know what I'm talking about with this stuff. But that's what I mean. That's why it's so frustrating. Because people fundamentally know nothing about Hamas. They don't know that they run most of the, you know, the Gaza Strip. It's absurd to blame Iran and make everything look like it's Iran's fault instead of looking at the real problem at hand. Oh, wait, what? No, I'm not blaming Iran for what? No, it's... Hamas would never exist if Israel genuinely had a commitment to Palestinian nation statehood. Like, there, there would be no Hamas to begin with. I don't know why they were elected in the first place because they so were shall. elected in, ele in an election. I'm not, I'm not someone who pretends that Hamas doesn't represent certain Palestinian people. People voted for Hamas because they were desperate and they hated the status quo. They felt like Yasser Arafat and the PLO had sold, sold them out to Israel, so they voted for a more militant group. They didn't give a shit that they were Muslim Brotherhood. Honestly, it's the same with the Egyptian election. A lot of people didn't give a shit that they were voting for Muslim Brotherhood. They, always, always the same. You get fucked with by Western powers and who's seen as the anti-Western, anti-Westerners, especially in the Muslim world, especially in the Muslim world, the most reactionary factions are unironically seen as like the less corruptible forces due to their, you know, they're Islamists. Like they, that's all they care about. And, and on top of that, they're definitely not corrupted by the West is the way that they're seen. They're seen as the, uh, you know, the most reasonable form of resistance. Especially when uh, the Arafat, uh, the Palestinian Authority, Fatah Arafat, like uh, almost entirely was uh, seen as uh, first a, a CIA, like, uh, you know, they were, they were way too close to Americans. Um, and, and then also way too close to Israel as well. Some way too close to Israel, some way too close to, uh, uh American state department interests. You know, Palestinians and Egyptians share that relationship of they're not all Islamic fundamentalists, but sometimes they'll vote for stuff like that because they feel like they want to change something. So in the Egyptian revolution, the secular parties did terrible because they weren't promised any change that made any sense where the Islamist parties were offering change. So people voted for them. Same thing happened in fucking Gaza in like 2005, 2006 as well. So again, you already have all this context, but then if you're just some rando guy who grows up there, you're not even going to think it's bad. And then your fucking brother, dad, or your whole family gets killed by an IDF bomb. Are you really going to start going around thinking, oh my God, Hamas are holding me hostage. And the human shield thing is absolute <laughs> bullshit. Israel attacks... Yeah, it's like... Yeah, Israel blew up my school. Fuck, man. I really hate Hamas, dude. Fuck. Like, who do you think? Who do you think the resentment is going to be directed at? The guy who's like... The, the dude who, like, grew up in your fucking neighborhood who, uh, you know, took up arms against the guy blowing up the school? Or the guy blowing up the school? Who? Who do you think the guy that is, like, sitting there in the fucking rubble is going to be, like, uh, on board with, you think? Them, no matter what. It doesn't matter. They're bombing hospitals, schools... They're not looking for Hamas. They want to, and that's what I mean. They fundamentally don't understand it, these liberals. They think this is a war. It's not a war. It's ethnic cleansing and genocide so Israel can finally take over the remaining Palestinian territories as people like Netanyahu, if you read that, you know, little biography about him in the 70s, he's always wanted to do this. So again, liberal racism thinking that Palestinians cause their own problems and Hamas, like, are some sort of... Liberal Westerners are so funny because they're like, they think like, the Palestinians, I guess, sitting in their fucking rubble, sitting in the rubble of what once was their home, right? Trying to fucking rescue their cat or whatever, are in their mind saying, fuck, man, if only I condemned Hamas harder, 
then this would not have happened because Israel is so gracious and doesn't bomb my home indiscriminately. Like, that's what you think is going on? They're like, fuck, I, oh, fuck, I hate Hamas so much. Oh, no. Of outside Iranian force imprisoning them in Gaza is absolutely insane and racist as hell. And again, even if I said this to this person's face, whoever this person is, do you think they'd change their mind? Or would they think I'm being a conspiracy theorist racist? I can guarantee you'd be the second one. Yeah, this is a good point. The same shit with the US when Saddam and Al-Qaeda were Muslims all the same time. Yeah, it literally is war on terror. 20 years ago, we, we invaded Iraq. We're doing the exact same shit here. Yeah. Al-Qaeda literally put out a hit on Saddam Hussein and <laughs> said any good Muslim would kill him. And at the same time, we're meant to believe, and 70% of Americans believed, that Saddam Hussein was involved in 9-11. And if he had nukes... He yeah, also, not only that, but also fucking... Um... <laughs> Iran too. That's the worst. That's the worst part about this is like Iran literally number one at fucking killing uh, Al Qaeda militants and like trying to rid the entire area of like America's mistakes. They're not great in their own form of governance. Obviously, they're like an Islamist uh, uh, theocratic state. It's pretty authoritarian. But like the fact that America turned around. And was like, yeah, those guys are fucking a part of the axis e axis of evil, and they totally are on board with fucking our ally, Saudi Arabia's own fucking terror cell. Like, like so much sectarian violence has occurred in the region, and all it took was for some dumbass American to be like, actually, they're all the same. I don't know if you know this, uh, Durka Durka. Am I right? And everyone was like, yeah, that's right. That's totally. I agree with you. He'd give them to Al Qaeda because they know, like how, like how the IDF and Israel know, they know Westerners fucking hate Muslims and Arabs, and they see them all as the same thing. So Al Qaeda and Saddam Hussein, despite one being Arab socialist Baptist versus fundamentalist Wahhabi group, they think they're the same thing. Same now with Hamas. They think Hamas is ISIS. When it's actually absolutely completely different. And here's another fucking guy. Didn't this guy used to be like some sort of COD streamer? Um, Israel is not trying to murder all Palestinians in Gaza. That's the point. The death count is sobering and horrific, but intent matters, does it? A campaign of genocide was actually what Israel was going for. My friend, the circumstances we see now would be unimaginably worse. Uh, how do they get worse? I honestly don't understand how they get worse. Do they drop a nuke on Israel? Do they drop a nuke on uh, Palestine next? Pointing out the extreme voices in the parliament, engaging in maniacal... Yes, ISIS and Hamas have fought, yes. Um... You might say, like, are there, are there, um, uh, ISIS and Hamas have fought. Yes, there are more extremist factions within Gaza, but yeah, Hamas is, is regularly, uh, fighting with, uh, those militant factions as well. Part of it is because they want to be the only game in town, obviously. But the other part of it is because, yeah, those guys are fucking, they have entirely different, uh, interests. No, that's not friendly fire, man. What the fuck do you mean? What do you mean friendly fire? You can't say friendly fire. These motherfuckers hate one another. And you're over here being like, oh, they must, they're must they the same. They're Muslim. Cool. Uh, rhetoric doesn't negate what's actually happening. Hamas straight up comes out and says, we want to annihilate every Jew and end the state of Israel. Their attack on October 7th was not a military strike on the IDF. It was a full-on genocidal action. That I love that, yeah. That's why, like, when Ethan showed that one fucking Lebanese, the, the dude in Lebanon, being like, we're going to do an October 7th one million times over. I'm like, come on, dude. Like, no, that's... <laughs> like, no. There is even... If anything, that literally shows that there is internal rift within Hamas leadership and on the militant side even. Doesn't seem to be any real acknowledgement of this from the folks that keep screaming genocide over and over again. This guy is another fucking liberal idiot. How is Israel not trying to do genocide? Netanyahu has made the point that he wants to get them out of Gaza, right? How is that not genocide? And also, even if they weren't trying to do a genocide, why does it fucking matter at this point? They've killed 10,000 people. And also... What I was saying about the Hamas stuff, they always say this. Oh, if Hamas could have the same power as Israel, they'd kill them all. 
Israel do, Israel can't just kill all Palestinians as quick yes. as they want. Do you know why? Because well, yes. these people are fucking brain dead idiots. Yeah, look at what they're doing. They killed 10,000 and the fucking entire world is on fire. Okay? You think Israel doesn't think that Western support, unconditional support from the West is an absolute necessity for them to continue their ethnic cleansing campaign? Like, why do you think America's telling Israel to, like, quiet down on the ethnic cleansing, like, dial it back a little bit? Because everybody understands that you can't keep bombing indiscriminately, okay, and have no real purpose to that other than cruelty and ethnic displacement and assume that the rest of the liberal world is going to look at that and go, ah, I guess they deserve it. Fucking America can't even get, uh, America can't even do that. And America is not Israel. America is, Israel can get away with it because America is allowing them to do so. If Israel tried to like nuke Palestine or some shit, Iran would invade them tomorrow. America is not Israel as in like, you know, America is the top dog. They have a lot more bandwidth with genocide than Israel does. Israel only has bandwidth with genocide as far as America allows it. That's my point. So when Israel, you know, starts doing America shit to that degree, then the Western world is going to start being like, okay, dog, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing? What do you, what do you think is going on here? You have to fucking dial it back a little bit. And it would literally probably kick off like World War Three. Israel know that to do this, it has to be slower. They know if they called up every IDF soldier and invaded Gaza tomorrow, they know that could spark a massive conflict with Egypt. And I know Egypt normalized relations and they're in bed with the US, but the Egyptian people would literally try and overthrow the government if this happened. Same with a lot of these governments. The Saudis wouldn't accept this. So Israel, for as much as they are unhinged, they know they can't do stuff like crazy fast. If they kill 10,000 people in a week, or even like a couple of days, which he says they could, I know they could do that. They don't do that for on purpose because they have a political disinformation campaign working at the same time so they can get away with this. How people don't understand that if Israel just went in tomorrow and tried to kill like in one day like, like 30,000 Palestinians or kill them all, then that would literally kick off World War Three, And they know that. They know that it would literally be like Syria, Iran, probably invading straight away. It would literally kick off a war. They know they have to do this so they can isolate different groups. They can have the diplomatic war. They can get the Americans to back them and basically tell the Saudis and others, like, oh, you know, don't react too harshly because we know all the Arab uh, states have sold out the Palestinians. So, yeah, like, this guy... And, and this is it's a smugness as well. It's that he actually knows what he's talking about and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Who Who huh. is this fucking guy to, to tell anyone about the situation? This nobody trying to say that, oh, Hamas wants to do genocide, but Israel didn't. But because Israel is currently doing one and Hamas isn't, we still need to remember that. Like, how's that helpful? I mean, even if Hamas did say we want to kill every Jew and, and Israeli and kill them all. Um, yeah, they don't have the capacity for that. And they're not doing that right now. Yeah, it's also just as fucking delusional as, like, thinking that that Hamas is going to invade America. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're after the, the West next. Remember when they said this about ISIS over and over again, where they were like, dog, ISIS is coming to America, dog. Check it out. They're coming to the fucking Western world. They're going to, dude, just you wait, dude. Just you fucking wait. And it's like, where the fuck are they now? What do you mean? And especially when it comes to fucking, especially when it comes to like Hamas or, or any kind of like movement that is a militant movement against like, uh, against an apartheid state or a militant movement that also has a civil governance division. Like they have responsibilities, dude. They, they can't be just like, they can't be out here fucking, you know, fighting America or some shit. You know who gets to do that? America's allies that are simply a militant cutout that America has armed and trained and also has allowed to operate within American boundaries under the auspices of the CIA, like Al-Qaeda. Or, you know, I mean, what do I know? I just <laughs> Those are the only motherfuckers who have the bandwidth to go and attack America, okay? Because they don't have any other secondary considerations. What? You're not the focus right now? What is this? 
Oh, yeah. It's like all the people in this country in the college campuses right now crying about how scared they are. Yeah, they did a horrible attack which targeted civilians, but you can also see that in the context of 70 years of ethnic cleansing uh, onto the Palestinians, and it's a very violent, uh, radicalized extremist reaction to that, which is what you get when you create desperate people. You get extremism. We all understand this when it comes to Iraq and Afghanistan. Why don't we understand it here? I don't think these people understood it when it came to Iraq and Afghanistan at the time. That's the difference. Everybody loves talking about how different their perspective would have been back then if they had developed consciousness, okay? And it's like, no, it wouldn't. You're already doing it. This is your opportunity. Listen, I was a young boy back then, but maybe because of where I was in the world, I had a very different perspective on America's affairs in the Middle East, okay? <laughs> maybe it's because of, you know, my proximity to what was going on or the fact that I wasn't in America, but, like, there was never a moment in my life where I was like, damn, this shit's fire. What America's doing is great. But I know for a motherfucking fact there's so many dumb bitches that currently are on the side of Israel uh, that, that think, like, no, 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 this is, like, totally valid. This time is different. This time is different. Would absolutely, fucking lutely if they were old enough back then, defend America's actions in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. But, yeah, these guys just... They just don't know anything. And that's just so frustrating because... The real blowback like said, is the three-minute ad break chatter. most people don't know anything. And I don't have a problem with that because we all you know, have specialities and different histories. People do history. We all know different things. Um, most people don't know much about Israel. Most Westerners know fuck all about the difference between Hamas and Hezbollah. <laughs> they, know, they know nothing about this stuff. Um, but at the same time, like I said, when you have a good core set of values and politics as leftists often do, you can be open to the information and you realize what side is worse, what side is just doing more destruction, and you know Israel is the bad guy. Yeah. So liberals like this, oh my God. Like And like I said, let me know in the chat. If I spoke to either of these people I just, I just showed you, do you think they changed their mind? Do you think I could convince them? Even though I know what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm right as much as I can be. Like... No, I would call absolutely it like objective not. truth, but I am explaining a situation like the reality. Because for a lot of people, I think it's just like about being in a club rather than, and even people in this chat, like I'll admit, I, I certainly, there are a lot of people who like at least have their morality in check, but for the most part, it's just like, it's just like, oh, I want to, I want to feel like I belong. I want to feel like I'm, you know, shitting on my enemies. That's why, that's why I usually don't fuck around with like the back and forth between like commentators or whatever and their communities because like I don't think that there's any real reason to do that like it's so stupid like sure it's but good for again, clicks this is important to understand this is an important distinction I think that to um for a lot of people talking about Ethan absolutely not no I'm not talking about Ethan at all what do you mean oh you're responding to someone else no Ethan is a perfect example of someone who is actually trying to work through his own personal, uh, his own personal upbringing by literally practicing empathy, which is why I have a lot of re uh, I have a lot of respect for for what he's going through in his own uh, in his own way. Like there is there's a very big difference between like unlearning biases versus just like kind of doling out talking points in rapid fire because you're a part of an in group and like. That's the reason why so many people can contextualize, uh, can't really contextualize the information that's in front of them and can only look at it from the framework of like, what did this content creator say? Well, we don't like this content creator, so it must be wrong. And my content creator that I like actually is probably right. He's, he's done a lot. He's done a lot of reading on this matter. The other guy that I don't like, he might have done some reading on the matter, but he says he's a dumbass. I don't like him. He was wrong on fucking, uh, you know, saying Russia will never invade Ukraine because it'd be disastrous for both parties involved, even though he apologized for it, but I will never let it go. And also, um, you know, uh, he, he's just wrong on this one too. He must be wrong. So that's why they can't, they can't look at, they can't look at this from like, who are the actors? What are their motivations? What is the reason for why they're behaving in the way that they're behaving? What are some external factors to consider? And instead, they, they immediately dive into, like, the drama aspect of it because that is, like, the, the most effective way to feel like you're eating the garbage. 
there's no reason to exercise any critical thought here. There's no reason to actually like read anything. It's only, it's only simply to to uh, look at this from the from the framework of just like dishing out talking points. I guess I'm kind of doing that here as well by looking at uh, Cavernacle's like insane liberal takes on Israel Palestine. It's just like. There's a lot of these takes, and he is very well read on this stuff, so I just uh, wanted to see what he had to say. They would never accept what I'm saying. And that's what I mean. Liberal racism and liberal brainwashing um, makes these people just... Like, I'll go so far as to say this as well. For example, uh, Loner Box. You might not like him. You might think he's a Zionist. I don't think he is. Um, I do think that he triangulates his messaging to be, like, extremely as, like, palatable as possible to liberals. But I would not say that he's not well-read. He is definitely well-read on this matter. You might get more mad at him because he is very well-read on the matter. But as far as I've seen, everything I've seen of him on this subject is actually pretty... Um, it's actually pretty... He isn't hiding his power level. He is a liberal. I think, he, you know, he's, he's definitely a, a, on, the, on the liberal side of things for sure. But... But I'm not going to sit here and be like he's just regurgitating Wikipedia talk, uh, Wikipedia talking points, with no uh, serious thought behind it. Reading a wiki article is not well read. No, I think he's well informed. I think he's he goes way beyond uh, Wikipedia talking points. Uh, Loner box is who I'm talking about, not uh, not Cavernicle. No, guys, there are there are certainly there are certainly points of information that he brings up in his videos that uh, definitely correspond to someone who has at least done beyond the, the basic uh, research. 100%. Um, this, on the other hand, is not. Like, when I hear this, this is like, this is Zionist Hasbara 101 shit, okay? You didn't do any fucking, you didn't do any... You didn't do any critical thinking. You didn't do any of that. You just literally are regurgitating. You are just simply regurgitating things that you have heard other people say and you want to be a part of uh, like a like a group. And it's fine. Everybody wants to. It's just not so fine when you're so condescending about it. Just have absolutely shit takes. I had to unfollow some people I'm even mutuals with. Because I'm like, you're such a fucking liberal. You're just posting racist shit all the time. And <laughs> yeah. I thought you were better than this. I actually and, and the worst part is like, people don't even see that racism. Like they, that's the other, that's the other aspect of this is that like so many supposedly well-intentioned liberals that talk about this stuff. Um, so many well-intentioned liberals that talk about this shit, like are just, <laughs> they're so fucking racist, dude. It's crazy. It's like every... These guys, they're, they're, they're fucking human shields. It's really sad, but we got to bomb them. You know, we just got to keep bombing them to stop them being human shields or Hamas is ISIS. They want to genocide. The Palestinians want to genocide every single Israeli Jew, like every single Jew. They want to, they want to genocide all the Jews around the world. It's like. I don't know. I just, I feel like people, I try to contextualize this information from the perspective of like American politics. Sometimes the reason why I want to do that is because like, I know I'm speaking to a mostly predominantly Western audience. And I feel like that's very good to, that's very good to try and like work them through it. Um, something to always consider, even if you live in the Imperial core and you have no understanding of like what radicalizing conditions might look like, right you still have the capacity to look at like fundamentalists overseas versus fundamentalists here and develop a better understanding of um uh develop a a better understanding of the situation just try to try to think about what would happen to you in that situation like what would you do what would you do if you were born into just like a structure where there's no you know there's no sewage system cuz like this occupying force has bombed it like, how would you feel? Do you think you really would need to, like, watch television and go to an UNRWA school where they tell you Israel is evil? Or do you think you would just internalize that because Israel is evil to you? Like, they've done such evil to you, right? 
And in that situation, what would you do? The fact that, like, in spite of all of these conditions, that Palestinians have consistently still, knowing full well that a two-state solution is just dangled in front of them like a fucking carrot to continue expanding rapidly in their settlements in the West Bank, have still consistently majority voted for in exit polls and in other polls for a two-state solution is insane. They are the most resilient people on the planet. They have been wrong from the fucking jump, like unimaginably wrong from the jump. And still these motherfuckers are like, no, like, please just stop killing us. Like, yeah, sure. They voted for Hamas. They did. But there are other factors at play there. It's, it's much more complicated. And I think it serves no purpose to trivialize, to, to look at it from this incredibly reductive perspective. Like, I fear sometimes that, that people will hear what I have to say and go, oh, dog, you're a terror supporter. You love terrorism. That's it. Um, I, I, I fear that because people love the, you know, terror jacket and slap that sticker on you and, and uh, you know, run along with it because it's like immediately you're just signaling to a much broader audience that this guy is like, not a good guy he's like defending bad guys doing bad things and it's so much more complicated than that even though the ultimate problem isn't complicated there's no moral dilemma here it's an apartheid state it's unacceptable it's unjustifiable I actually clad with someone about israel palestine and they're having terrible takes so i'm like how how did i go on your channel and tell you about oh, you're muslim that's exactly what they hear it has nothing to do with oh, your words i mean there's then, that too yeah like the amount of times i get to i have to condemn hamas uh, every single conversation, every single time I open up the conversation, certainly, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of a role there, Hamas Abi. Uh, whereas, like, you know, if you're, if you work for Doctors Without Borders and you're like a blonde woman, nobody's asking you to condemn Hamas. You're having these takes. Here's, here's the thing, and it's not just Americans, but it is Americans, and I have seen some British people. So I think when it when it comes to domestic politics... A lot of people can be okay in terms of like have more like of a leftist analysis of of domestic politics and like the economy and um, all that stuff. But I think the problem comes when we start talking about international politics because they're so ignorant. The problem then is like they don't understand how to actually project their politics because yes, exactly, and and because they're like I want to say I want to be as charitable as possible. Because they want to be as, like, educated on the matter, but they don't want to, like, actually go and read books. Maybe they don't even know which books to fucking read or which articles to read, right? Who they, Like, when you lack media literacy in this situation, you, you just go and you look at MSNBC and you're like, well, they're telling me one thing, so they've never lied to me. They're going to be a little biased against Medicare for all, but overall, like, they wouldn't lie about foreign policy. They see, oh my God, scary Hamas terrorists. That reminds me of the war on terror. And they attack Israel first. So um, therefore, like, I actually think Israel are the good guys here uh, because I don't know anything. And then most of the people I know are saying Israel are the bad guys. But I don't actually think that because I don't know anything. And to me, it seems like they're not. So I know I'm going to have to stay quiet and not say anything because if i say something it becomes controversial controversial and then if you do say something if you're a more like vague leftist then people in your own audience start getting mad oh my god you you support hamas terrorists